Okay, what do you think? It looks like you kind of got it. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, looks pretty good. Didn't have too much trouble at all. Have you used uh, Illustrator before? Uh, back in high school, but that was a while ago in like one class. It always trips me out on this project. <clears throat> I just told my girlfriend this. When I started this, which was 10,000 years ago, mm -hmm. this stuff was just starting to creep into the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was taught really horribly. I think it's still taught really horribly in a lot of cases, but not always. Um, and it was just like, I don't get this at all, man. And they gave us this pen tool project. It was just like, I, I just didn't get it at all, man. And then, so when I started teaching this class, I go, well, you know, I need to give everybody, I don't know, a week to finish. And a lot of times when we're in class, people have already finished the assignment by the time we're done with class. It's just, it's weird to me how fast everybody gets it now. You know what I mean? It's just, it's such a different world in that way. I mean, yeah, pretty much by just rewatching the video from class. I got it down pretty fast, I'd say. Well, you guys, again, you guys are digital natives. Uh oh, I froze. Um, you guys are digital natives. I think that makes a difference. I didn't grow up with this stuff. So this stuff seems all, when I started it, it seemed all Star Trek to me. Yeah. I think it did to everybody at that time. The only thing I'd say here now, and this is just more of a design thing, tools wise, it looks fine, is um, make sure, because I, I really like these line weights and that that made sense doing it away from the light and all that, right? Uh -huh. just make sure it's just like your values when you put you know uh, an illustration or a painting or whatever <clears throat> make sure that like like this one here this one here feels like it needs a little more weight on it just to sort of even it out with the other ones that are away from the light does that make sense yeah and like here you got to make a few leaps of logic here like maybe here I don't know why it's pinching like that hang on there's, there's a couple of points in there, but I'd fatten that up a little bit. This one down here for sure. Oops. This is underneath in a way that can get, a, that's too thick, but you get the point. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try and dial them all in. Just, you know, these two, because they're away from the light, they need to sort of match the value of the other things that are away from the light. But that's about it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any questions? Uh, no, don't think so. Right on. Well, you guys, this one's packaged. That's cool. Oh, yeah, good. Where are you at? I'm here. What'd you think? Um, I thought it was pretty simple. Um, I've briefly used a pen tool before, but I've actually never, um, I guess, um, edited the line, the, like the width of the, line, of the lines cool? before manually. Isn't so that cool? was new. Yeah, it is pretty cool. What I love about it, and I get this all the time in this class where people, they, they do that, and all of a sudden you go, see how your drawing looks all bitching and punchy and pro, right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And by the way, take this same thing into your, your real drawing. It's, it works the same way. Now, you know, line weight away from the light, blah, 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 blah occlusion, uh, you know, things meeting each other gets a little fatter, things over. It's the same thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This looks nice and balanced. I think same thing. I think this little line right here can get a little fatter and this one can get a little fatter. Does that make sense? Yeah. But I mean, other than that, it looks nice and balanced. You have any questions? No, I think I'm good. Okay, good. Thank you. You guys are going to make this class really fast today, by the way, because I don't see anything wrong with anything. But I'm missing some too, though. You do not want to miss steps in here, you guys. Okay, this one is not packaged. Okay, I thought I did it right. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's it not. should be. No, you did do it right. Oh, I know. Here's why. <clears throat> because you did put the fonts in here, but I need to um, load them. And now I got your font. I just got new fonts. Oh, okay. That's why it wasn't you, actually. Oh, cool. Okay. But you have to actually load the... Um, 
Oops, wrong file. There you go. I have a font kind of like that. I, I mainly just wanted to practice like loading Absolutely. fonts or like packaging fonts. Absolutely. I think you'll uh, excel in here. I think your style is going to translate very well to um, Illustrator. I'm excited to to use it. Like, oh, dude, I all love the work it. I've seen looks really cool. Well, you know what I love about this class? <clears throat> um, if you if you just kind of dig into it and you already have some you know ability and all that, um, I keep getting these damned emails all day. Hang on. Okay. Okay, whatever. Sorry. I get emails on my work email. I always think it's something I've got to react to. But anyway, um, so people come in here and they do that <clears throat> and they really discover it because I think a lot of people don't really know how cool Illustrator is. It's not the, I think I've said this before, it's not the big glamorous program. They always think it's Photoshop and it's like, dude, Illustrator is badass, right? Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people come in here and they just kill it in here. And they, I feel like they leave with this like whole new skill set very quickly. Yeah. And, and, and it, 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 there's something about that that's really interesting to me. And then I've had a lot of students in here sort of find their thing, which is really interesting to me. And it's not like, um, do you know Shelly? Wait, is it Shelly? Yeah. Um, she works for JetBlue. Mm -mm. Anyway, there's another girl. I have had a bunch of them and they just start knocking out these and they're and a lot of them are like graphic designers and they just catch fire, man. And then they sort of take that into everything else. And I don't know why it just sort of launches them really nicely. You know what I mean? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think part of it is because graphic designers tend to be taught um, in graphic design programs. They tend to be taught how to assemble and not how to create. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what I like about this tool, especially for graphic designers, for anybody, but especially for graphic designers, is there's so many ways to create images in here without having to be some drafts person or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. And, and they also have a good sense of design, usually in big shapes and all that kind of stuff. So they kind of usually do a really good job in here. But then they realize, like, I don't have to just assemble shit. I can make my own stuff. You know what I mean? Then they go into mm -hmm. Steven's class and they show me the stuff they're doing, in whoever's class. And I go, man, that's awesome. You know what I mean? Like they just start doing great stuff. And I had them do great stuff in here that, um, I can't remember her first name, Galbraith, I think was her last name. She just did a monster cool project in here, you know? And just, it's so fun to watch that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so fun. And I know your style somewhat. It's starting, your style is starting to sort of solidify a little bit. I don't mm -hmm. know if you feel that way or not. Yeah. yeah. And again, we've talked about this, where I really started seeing it hit was 107. <clears throat> that guitar guy piece you did and that kind of thing is going to translate like like crazy in here yeah <clears throat> so it doesn't look like you had any pro this is great the line weight looks great it looks see how it looks nice and balanced mm -hmm. okay <clears throat> so your your line weight is is, is indicating value <clears throat> so you just got to make sure you're not making giant leaps in value just like you would if you're actually putting tone down does that make sense yeah Okay. The, the smooth tool was like amazing. Oh my God. It's, That's, a yeah. Yeah. it's the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's nice to have. <laughs> yeah. And what's great about it is like, if you're going to ink, the reason this is important to me, and there's a lot of occasions where you might ink something, you're not going to do it by hand anymore. Okay. Not, not mm -hmm. that you don't ever. I mean, if you want to do that, that's fine. And there's certain things that sure I would do that, but <clears throat> this kind of inking, I'm going to do it like this. Mm -hmm. right. and later on we'll get a little um i'll give you some of my tool sets and we'll be able to make this look like it's etched we'll be able to make it look i mean on and on and on okay yeah cool um your your line weight looks really balanced okay thank you so you don't have any questions uh no not at the moment good thank you mike Hey Mike, I have a question. Sure. Uh, I submitted mine, but I don't see mine on your folder over there. Uh, okay, so here, the first class, I will do this. After this, I won't. Okay. Hang on. Uh, I'm just going to open the folder. Just dump it in there. Oh, okay, cool. I was just double checking. Uh, hang on. Come on. 
Okay, it's open. Anybody who missed that, go dump it in there. Because I think I've got seven and I've got one, and I've got uh, how many people in here? 11, so I should have 11. Okay, this is uh, Kayla's, right? Yep. What do you think? Uh, I'm surprised, like, uh, I didn't know I could do this. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, uh, I had a really bad uh, class at Cal State learning Illustrator because they were teaching Photoshop and Illustrator at the same time. So yeah. it was just ended up being a very frustrating experience. Well, you were over, you were over at Cal State? Yeah. What'd you think? Of uh, the school? Yeah. Mm, it's, I, it got me where I, I need to be right now, but I wouldn't recommend going there anymore if you want to go for like entertainment art or anything like that. Yeah. It's changed a lot since I've left, so. I, I feel like in academia, you're always fighting this, <clears throat> this nonsense battle of, mm -hmm. you know, it's a bunch of fine art versus this. And it's like, why do we have versus anything? You know what I mean? Why can't you do fine art and drift over and do entertainment art and drift over and do illustration, do editorial and do, which a lot of people are doing now, people who are modern thinkers. And to me, that sort of traditional, I love traditional work and all that stuff, but why would you limit yourself like that? Mm -hmm. Why would you not want to have an interesting career where you go, like I did when I was doing uh, the sketchbook stuff and kind of editorial for National Public Radio. Why would I not want to do that? That's totally interesting to me. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I, I really do feel like you guys have much more opportunity that way now. It used to be very locked off. It's not like that anymore, okay? It's only like that with old farts who don't know how to do anything. You know what I mean? Oh, I just got this skill set, so I hide behind tradition. Well, that's BS. Um, okay, did you have fun with it? Yeah, yeah. I was just, like I said, I was really surprised I was able to do this because the pen tool was something I didn't know very well. That's what everybody thinks. They think it's like... <clears throat> um, and it does take a little bit of, in this, again, this is another weird thing in this class. Mm -hmm. um, again, when I tried to use the pen tool, when I first used it, I just sucked at it, man. And I sucked at it forever. You know what I mean? Like for a really long time. <clears throat> and I don't know. I think it's partly just because it was very new. What I might do here, and I'm just saying this because it's your own thing. I might go, oops. Oh, this is... um. I have the AI file too, if you want to get that one. All I was going to say is I'd probably go, oh, I have it in Photoshop, no wonder. Hang on. I can do it just real quick. Let me get rid of this too. Well, you do have the AI file. Here it is. Yeah. I just opened up the wrong one, I guess. There it is. Okay, so let's go. Then I'm going to put one more layer here. Okay. And I'm just going to half-ass this. It'll be a really crappy drawing, but <clears throat> let's get rid of that. Then I'm going to change this to black. Look, it holds up good in black. One thing I'd say, though, is this, like this, should be in front of this leg, I think. God damn it, hang on. Does that make sense? Mm. E. There's a mass there and that leg is behind it. Yeah. So I'm just gonna go here with my scissors. Oops, cut that. Oops, I don't want to be so clumsy there. More like that. <clears throat> mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Just as some, that mass is in front of the other one. I also might, and then I tweak this and get it back where it was. <clears throat> um, and then what I was gonna say is let's lock this off. Go to here. I could probably just take this same shape right here, maybe. Because again, <clears throat> when I can, I want to reuse assets. I'm going to see if I can do this. I don't know if I can.
And we'll learn more about something I'm going to do here in a second. Oops. Hang on. Okay, so what I just did is I closed that shape. Let's see if I got it closed. Yeah. So I closed that. And we'll get into the, what I'm doing right now a little bit later. And I'm just going to take this shape and close it. Oops. Now these two are closed. And I'm just going to combine them real quick. And then I'm going to go to black, or I'm going to go to a gray. Oops. I'm going to get rid of the line. I'm going to go to fill. And I'm going to do real quick. I'm just gonna, oops, I got to shut that off. What's that noise? I don't know. Okay. So I'm gonna paste this here. I pasted it behind this. Is this full? No, it isn't, okay. So I'm just gonna put a real quick, um, I'm gonna do this real half ass, oops. But I just wanna get the point. All I'm doing is I'm creating a shape to block. Mm -hmm. I would never do it this sloppy, but. Then I'm gonna change this to white. And then, and then we'll do, talk a little more about this a little later, but I want this object to be all the way in the back behind the white that I just put, right? So I'm going to go up here to object, arrange, send to back. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm just going to pop this back here and I can get that other leg back there just in like a silhouette. It's too high, but do you get the point? Yeah. So in that case, I might abandon the line and just do uh, a silhouette. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Everything looks good. Thank you. Uh, yeah. The shadow part. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you have any questions? Uh, maybe one. Uh, when I was first started doing the pen tool, uh, I discovered it by accident. And maybe there's a more efficient way to do it. But the the points, like the ears or the the hair, where I have really sharp edges, like the, a little pointy hair, is there a better way to make that? Because I I Figured it out, like I said, by accident, but I don't know if it's like the here. Way to yeah, like those really sharp points. I think that's fine if you want that sharp point, right? Yeah, but I don't know if there's like a better way to do it that's quicker. Uh, there probably always is. I mean, that's been the way I would do it. Okay. <clears throat> I just tend to draw on these things. I, I don't really tend to. I mean, I'll think about that. I'm sure it'll pop into my head after class, then I'll I'll bring it up. <clears throat> okay. But I mean, I don't see any reason why I would do it any different. Let's see if we can. I don't know if we can. But just so you know, it's not doing it. There's. Oh, there it is. Let's see. So see this little, see this little dot that showed up right there? Do you see it? Yeah. Now, if I want to do the other thing and round it off, I would just pull that dot in. Okay. And, and that's going to show up in a lot of shapes where if I go, there's the four little dots, you see them <clears throat> mm -hmm. right there. So if I want to round this off, it's a very handy tool. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And by the way, <clears throat> uh, up here in your, cause remember we talked about, here's your control bar up here. Yeah. So I'm going to select that and then see how it gives me the stroke thing. Mm -hmm. So if you know, you can, and again, under palettes, under windows where all your palettes live, the stroke thing is in there. Okay. 
So a more extensive version of it is in there. But if I drop this down, I get these options. Like see this end? There's a lot of times I don't want that square end. It doesn't look finished, right? So I can come up here to the stroke and go, give me a rounded edge to finish the stroke. Cool. You know, and then you have these corner options, limits. So all those, and then you can also go right here and click uh, dash line and you can change. So it's pretty far apart. So let's change this to th uh, six points. And I can just keep going tighter and tighter and tighter and get a dash line, okay? Mm -hmm. But they're under here. And the reason I don't mind jumping ahead about this is that's just something you can go in and play around with. It's just part of your control set for that particular tool. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So you, you there's these kind of endless, just endless uh, adjustments of all these things, okay? Okay. I tend to use it pretty straightforward. And I just like to draw with, you know, whatever. Um, but we're going to learn, look at a lot of ways of doing this very quickly. Okay. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but like, uh, maybe I did. One of the, one of the places where it would save me all the time, this program is like um, somebody might, we might, because when you're doing toy stuff, it kind of runs the gamut. You might be doing stuff like sometimes I do stuff from Mattel where it was like, Hey, we have a bike. And we want to put added value into the bike. So we want something, some toy that works with the bike. And then you have parameters They, you know, I'd go over to Mattel and they go, here's the box. And I don't know if you've ever seen a disassembled bike, bike in a box. It's a mess. It's like, there's, it's all this stuff in there and they go, not, okay. So you have this budget and you got to make it fit in this box. So it's a double challenge. Right. <clears throat> and then sometimes somebody will come to you and go, Hey, we want to do something for something but we only have 20 cents per unit. And I go, why don't we do an activity book? Or one time I go, why don't we do flashcards? Okay. And, and they, and they go, okay. I go, cause we could actually do a nice printed activity book or something for kids, you know, yeah. with that budget. And then they'd go, okay, we've got to have it by tomorrow. It was always like some stupid panicked, situation well i could go in and knock out an activity book in illustrator real fast you know what i mean okay. like i would just do really quick sketches just like i showed you guys with that poster stuff or whatever and then i wouldn't even flesh them out i just they were balanced enough or i could pull them into illustrator and start illustrating them and i would just illustrate like all day long on these things and i'd get four or five pages done in a day you know what i mean so i might have a 10 page book done by the end of the week or something like or even less Okay, that, that sucks, by the way, when you're doing that, but this saved my life that way. It just made it very fast. Does that make sense? Yeah. I could go from a very rough idea and sketch to a very finished idea and finished illustration ready for press fast. Okay. And by the way, when you go out and you're looking for work, be careful. And I know you don't have all these options when you first go out and work, but be careful when a company goes, especially if you're a graphic designer. If a company goes, if they, all their interview questions are all about, how long did it take you to do this? Like they'll look through your portfolio. How long did it take you to do this? Uh, it took me a day. Next page. How long did it take you to do this? If that's their question over and over again, that means they're a meat grinder. That means they just want to crank out a shitload of t ugly work, probably low end work. And all they care about is that you crank that stuff out. They don't care about quality. They don't care about nothing. Okay. Be careful of those kind of places. Okay, because you don't want to get into a meat grinder. If it's your first job and you go, I'll do this, I'll get a resume credit. When I'm sick of it, I'm out of here. Or as soon as I take this job, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be looking for another job. Does that make sense? And I used to make a big deal out of being ethical. And I do think you should be ethical in your work habits. But one of my ethical work habits was if I, if I got hired by a company, I, I felt like I owed them about two years. It costs about 20000 25000 It's probably more now to hire somebody. So I go, I made a commitment here. I, I think if I give them two years, I'm good. I wouldn't follow that at all anymore. Okay. All you don't want to have is a track record where whoever's interviewing goes, why are you only here for two months? Why are you only here for this much? How much? You don't want to do that. But don't have any loyalty to these companies because they're going to have absolutely none to you. Does that make sense? Like when they're stock, and they'll, they'll be nice to you. They'll tell you the greatest thing in the world. The stock share falls. They got to get rid of two people. They don't care. So I don't see any reason to be loyal to them either. Okay. 
Okay, this looks great. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through these fast. Well, you guys all pack shit really good. Let's close that. Let's go here. See what kind of Comic Sans. Who's using Comic Sans? <laughs> yeah, I I just did it for fun. Oh, okay. As long as you're doing that ironically, it's fine. Yeah. By the way, somebody you can find it. I can't remember who it was. It was some politician. <laughs> and they I don't know, they submitted their resignation or something. I can't remember what it was, and they did it in Comic Sans. Unironically. So it was like this document, this like political document with a seal on it. And it was all, the whole letter was written in like Comic Sans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. Okay, I don't see thin, oh wait, is that over here? Okay, here it is. Okay, do you have any problems with it? This is a nice big bold line work. Not really, um, yeah, it was, it was good. Okay, my question is though, if this is my light source, how come this is as thick as this? Um, I was gonna go with the value thing at first, but then I just went with, um, I decided to just bold all of the um, major shapes. Okay, I'm cool with that. Of the figure. And then I mean, it works. I'm not saying it doesn't work. Yeah, I think it looks great. Uh, do you have any questions? No, no, that was pretty good. Okay, good. Have you ever used it before? Yeah, I've been using Illustrator for a while. Oh, okay. For Steve's class and stuff. I'm gonna have plenty of time to go over the next part of this, so that's good. Who's this? This is Ryan. Where are you at? There you are. You there? I don't know where. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm here. Okay, the only thing I'd say here is this one gets jumps really far away from the other ones, and this one does a little bit too. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get you. Other than that. Uh, you, did you have any problems using the tools or anything? Uh, no, not really. Okay, good. No questions? Uh, no. Okay, good. Well, you guys are... That's awesome. And this one... Okay, we got big leaps here. Where are you at? Hi. Uh, huh? you, under you understand that, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and that's easy to correct, correct? Mm hmm. Um, what's your major? Where are you at? Oh, there you are. What's your major? Major? Uh, animation. Okay. It's going to be very important for you, especially with obviously with 2D. Um, that line quality thing is everything. Does that make sense? Yeah. So just get a hand. I mean, I think you understand what we're saying, right? Yes. And you understand, it looks like you understood the tools fine, though, right? had some trouble in the beginning never really used the pen tool uh, at all that's that's probably but it looks like you i mean this this looks fine so did you get a handle on it yes uh got a little confused in the beginning because i was like what are they and managed to kind of figure it out okay um so now it's just managing that thin thickness but you know how the tools work correct oh yeah yes okay good um <clears throat> Which is what I'm concerned. You'll get better and better at it as we go, so I'm not worried about that. And I was again, a this is too much fun with the widening thing. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, especially early on like this. I don't care. Later on, when we do a pro in exercises, I'm not that concerned with it, other than I want to make sure that you um, know how to use the tools. Uh, when we do a project, that'll change a little bit, um, and then we'll uh, I'll get more concerned with the design and things like that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. What, what do you like, 2D or 3D? Ooh, that's tough. <laughs> it honestly depends. I agree with you. Yeah. By the way, I just there's a commercial you guys should look, if you're an animator or even a designer, whatever. There's a commercial popped up on, I don't know, whatever I was watching on, whatever it was. Um, and it's for Grubhub, I think. It's such a badly animated commercial. I think I know what you mean. <laughs> I've seen it. Like the one where they're dancing? Yeah. It's so bad. And I was like, looking at it going, okay, number one, why is this even animated? And number two, it's horrible. It's just, it's painful to watch it. Does that make sense? 
And then I was talking to Brian, who knew, you know, him and Frank worked over at Nickelodeon forever. And uh, and I, I, I go, is this preset animation? Is that what's going on here? And he goes, yeah. So I think that's what it was, because that's what it looks like. It's forced in weird ways that don't make sense. And the characters are really not appealing. You know what I mean? Plus, I don't even know what the commercial is saying. It's just everybody eating food and dancing around. It's like, okay, no concept. Okay, do I have any more in my, let me check this. I dropped mine in your folder, but I don't know if you got it or not. I'll check right now. Damn it, I keep clicking the wrong crap. Hang on. There we go. Yeah, I got it. This one. Okay. It looks like a, you, you squash it this way a little bit. All right. What do you think? Did, did it all make sense? Yeah. I was just having a little trouble with the, what, what's the, the smooth, uh, the widening tool. Yeah. Like, ah. Yeah. But for the most part, I was doing all right. Did it, did it pinch on you? Is that what it did? Yeah. Okay, so again, here's what you got to do. Okay, I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to change this view a little bit. Let me get rid of this. Um, I can go up here to view. You got to find out what perspective grid. I don't want snap to grid. I don't want this. It's weird it's showing. Hang on a minute. I'm actually looking for the, shouldn't be showing me that stuff. And okay, it's fine. I'll fix it later. Um, oh, what I was going to say is what happens is if I put a, let's do it here. Cause there's no line on this. Let's go to our width tool and I'm going to pull this up. There's my point. I'm going to pull it up. Right. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Okay. So now if I go back and I go I click off of this and I go, oh, I want to make it a little thinner, go back to my width tool and I go, I'm going to make it a little thinner. It's going to pinch. Yeah. Okay. And the reason is, is because I need to, I need to take my width tool and hover over this and see the point. Yeah. Now, when I meet that point, it'll give me back my handles and I got to adjust it from there. Okay. And then it'll adjust the whole thing without pinching. Okay. That's it. Cool. Okay. Other than that, it's fine. Thanks. Do I have anybody else that's dropping anything in there? I think now I have eight, so I'm still missing a few. I'm going to, okay, we're going to go through this fairly quickly. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Is there a way for when you're using the pen tool for the end to be a sharp point? Yes. So we're going to go new uh, tabloid. That's fine. Let's create a line here. It bugs me if I have those kinks in there, even though this doesn't really matter. Okay, so then we're going to go back to our width tool. We're going to just do that. 
Look at that line, right? It's a perfect thin, thick line. I don't know. I love lines. Okay, so let's zoom in on this. And we've got a square point, correct? Yeah. So I'm going to grab my width tool. It's going to give me those handles right there, Sam. And I'm just going to pinch them in as far as you want it. And now I've got it, and I could go even more. But I can get it needle sharp if I want to. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, so you have to use the widen tool for that. Same width tool, but you got to go all the way to that end. So the key is always the handles, right? Yeah. Find the handles. Yes, exactly. So let's go even closer. See, it's still got a little bit of a of that. So I got to get close on it and go, there it is again. Now I'm going to really pinch them like that. So it just depends on how, how, you know, pointy you want it to be. Yeah. You there? Sorry. I, I kept getting knocks on my door. <laughs> By the way, this is what I used to have to do. I don't know when they put the width tool in there, but I don't remember it being there. I used to, and I used to do the whole illustration. Okay. And I'd go, I'd go up here to my stroke and I'd fatten the stroke up to whatever. I'd fatten up the whole drawing. Okay. And some of them were pretty complex drawings. I mean, obviously some of them are pretty complex drawings. And then I'd go, remember a white arrow to, and then I'd go, and you guys don't know this yet, but this is a line. Okay. But I can go up here to object and go path and I can go outline stroke. And now it's a shape. So I can't alter it like as a line anymore. It's just a shape. Does that make sense? And then I would go grab these points. And sometimes there'd be like hundreds of them. And I grab all these points. And I'd adjust my, my line by doing that. Does that make sense? huge pain in the ass you know and then i'd have to grab this one oops it's grabbing everything for some reason grab this one and then pinch it off and then it was just a pain in the ass okay and then what i used to do and i still do this depending on who i'm working with i would make a copy of that file the one i'm going to send to the client or whoever i was dealing with and I'd select all those, my line light way, uh, my line layer would be on its own layer. My lines would be on its own layer. And then I would combine all those um, as because they're shapes. I combine them all together. Okay. And the reason I did that is so the, it made it almost impossible for anybody on the other end to dick around with my drawing. Does that make sense? And sometimes they'd go, hey, can you send us the, yeah, and most of the time they didn't know what they're doing. Because if you're screwing around with my stuff, you probably don't know what you're doing because it's finished. Um, they go, can you send us a live, whatever? And I go, it is live. I go, all the layers are there. You know what I mean? But they didn't want to ask, like, how come I can't adjust the line? Because they didn't know why and they felt stupid asking. So it just, it eliminated them screwing my stuff as much. Now, if you were, if I was working with somebody who was really good, like Disney or something like that, then I'm fine with it. I'd give them the file and they could do whatever they want with it. Does that mean, but what I would worry about is sometimes when your work goes to some places, not Disney or someplace like that, um, they might go, Hey, uh, Bob, the receptionist out there, he's really good at the illustrator. And they'll literally go in and start screwing with your stuff. And it makes me insane. Okay. I mean, steam comes out of my ears when I even think of that. It's like, how dare you touch my stuff? And I don't care if, if somebody good touches it and they go, Hey, I want to tweak this a little bit. That's fine. But somebody who just answers the phones, that pisses me off. Okay. So let's go. I'm going to use Josh's here. Okay, so now we're gonna start putting some color on this thing. By the way, that made sense, right? Pinching the end, all that stuff, right? Yes. Is it cold down there, Josh? No, it's a little like gloomy looking, but it feels fine. We're supposed to get it's... rain up here today. Oh yeah. I've had enough of weather for a little while. <laughs> so I spent four days like shoveling us out. 
Jeez. Well, I mean, it snowed, then it shoveled us out, and then it snowed, and it shoveled us out, and then it snowed, and it shoveled us. It's like, <laughs> after a while, it's like, all right, man, I'm done with this. How do you do it, like, when you normally have to go to school? <laughs> I would have to. Um, I would have gone down the hill in front of the storm and just stayed down the hill. Oh, okay. Because, like, it, look, I'll show you this real quick. I, uh, where is it? Let's see if I can find this real fast. Ah. Sorry, I got sound on these things. This is the street, right? I'm not getting out of that. There's no way. Yeah. I mean, maybe if I had a four by and I had chains, but I got a Prius, like a Prius is never getting out. <laughs> but anyway. That's cool though. Yeah, it's, it is really, but it's really cool right now. It's the only thing I like about Zoom. Mm. I can actually just enjoy it and just go, I wanna just make a fire, doodle all day, paint make soup, yeah. that kind of stuff. Okay, so now I've got this. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. <clears throat> There's your, okay, so I'm gonna change this. I wanna put type, so I know what that is. And, and you wanna start working smart right away. <clears throat> you wanna make sure that you're separating your layers. Um, you wanna make sure that you're, um, you're and you, it'll start kind of, I always kind of, have a, I start off with like this backfill layer and then I go to my color and then my um, line layers on top, you know, and then I have a type layer usually. Anything that I want to be able to easily block everything else off and adjust on one with it being easily shut off other things. Because the thing with the Illustrator is there's all these, you know, it, once you get a complex illustration going and you're looking at it with color or whatever, <clears throat> you forget what a tangled line work that is under there, right? And what happens with Illustrator is you start to adjust things. Like if you have it all in one layer, it'll keep trying to grab points and lock onto points and it's a total pain in the ass. So you want to make sure, and you'll develop your own way of, you know, how you like to do it. You know, make sure that you've got these um, layers all so you can just lock them off and work on them. Does that make sense? Okay, so I got type. Here's pin, that's fine. So we'll just say, I always put ink, that's just for me. Put whatever you want. <laughs> there's your i'm assuming that was your uh placed file correct yeah that was that i wonder why it's not there oh oh there it is okay wow you're right on man dude you're right on like i couldn't even see the line under it that's crazy okay so what i'm going to do here is i don't need the trace line right now i'm going to go i'm going to make a new layer I'm gonna put this layer underneath everything and I'm gonna call it color. Now, in the case of this, here's the beauty of this. We don't have to be all that accurate in our what I'm about to do, okay? Actually, let's do this. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put base color because I'm gonna build color on top of this. So there's my base color. And what I'm gonna do is all I have to do here, I'm gonna change your line to um, black. And by the way, if you've locked anything, because we talked about this, you can go up here in object and you can lock before you go and change, like globally change all the line value color or whatever. Hang on, this thing always comes over here for some reason. Um, before you globally change it, go up here and make sure everything's unlocked. Unlock all is ghosted. So that means it's all unlocked, okay? Then I'm gonna go and it's showing something's filled, okay? You see that, how it's confused? Like both these are confused. So let's go to this one and let's go, that's the fill. I'm gonna just say nothing. Okay, so you just had some white somewhere probably, okay? Does that make sense? 
if I make a line, like let's say this autumn, this is like, and it does this all the time. Let's say that I, this has, this right here has white in it, right? You're working on white, so you're not gonna see it. So then if I come in here and I start making lines, even though I don't fill them, it's gonna do that. Okay, which is probably what just happened, right? So I just gotta go get rid of that. And then we're fine, okay? So I wanted to get rid of that globally because I don't wanna see it under my, in my color, okay? So now I wanna select all this. I'm gonna go here. There must be two different values or something in the color. So I'm just gonna switch it to black and that's fine, there it is. So it looks really nice too. You know what I like about working in a different color? Then when you put it to black, it looks even more punchy. You know what I mean? And sometimes I get it, you don't want black, I get it. But okay, so what I'm gonna do here, so I got my line going and I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna make an overall uh, shape. I wanted, I have to, see how it wants to grab that line? You see that? So it goes from that star to that slash right there. It means it's gonna grab that line. I don't want that going on. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna lock that and I'm gonna open my base color. And the beauty of this now is that all I have to do is stay under that line and I'm good. So I'm just gonna do a perimeter thing here. And I'll probably be kind of sloppy here. And then I wanna click off Looks like I'm being a little sloppy right there, but I can fix some of that later. And normally I would get really close on this and just make sure I'm staying under the line. Why does it not matter as long as I stay under the line? The color won't bleed out. Huh? So the color won't bleed out. You're not gonna see it. You're not gonna see this raggedy edge because the, the black line's gonna cover it. That's why I can make all these points and I'm not worried about making nice smooth transitions or any of that kind of stuff. Cause you're not gonna see the edges anyway. Later on, we're gonna do work that we don't rely on the line where we do not uh, just pure shape and then it will matter, obviously. Now, sometimes I do this ahead of time, but I think it's better if you just see me do it. Almost there. And the other thing that's nice about illustrators is endlessly editable in a different way than like Photoshop is. Kayla. Yeah. Did you get your bachelor's from there? From Cal State? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're doing what a lot of them do. They go over to Cal State, they get their paper and they come over here and get their skills. Mm -hmm. You know, which, you know, and confirm, huh? And confirm went there as well. <laughs> that, I, I get very frustrated with that kind of thing, just in general. Okay, I feel like you guys should be getting. You guys are paying for an education; you should be getting quality education. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's no, it's more than annoying. You know, if you're teaching something. And I'm not trying to put a bunch of high-minded crap around it, but if you're teaching something, you are somewhat responsible for what you're teaching 
and and what your students are learning that you're giving them you're hopefully giving them a perspective a professional perspective and a professional skill set does that make sense yeah give you a professional skill set but they should sure as hell train you if you work hard right yeah and the way they teach it is different like um took an animation class for a year and then when i took one class with frank he did it in like two weeks right you know why Frank's good <laughs> well yeah but you know why because he worked at nickelodeon for like 17 years right yes okay so let's turn these off and let's look at what we got there's what we have okay does that make sense Okay, so I'm going to pull in this. Um, let me see if I can find it because I don't want to make up colors on this. It's probably. Maybe I don't have it. I know I did. So let's go here. Let's go. Damn it, where is it? I think you passed it. Did I? Higher. Higher or lower? Higher. You got to go up. I'll see. There oh, there it is. I knew that. Okay, so I'm going to drag this into here. I don't care what color you make this, by the way. So let's make sure I'm pulled over here so we don't get lost in the window again. Okay, here's our tools. Okay, so now I don't want this line around this. I'm just, but if I, I'm gonna take my eyedropper and I'm gonna go think, and now we've got blue, correct? Now let's go turn our ink back on. And now we have that, yeah? Now, all we have to now, I'm just going to turn this. I'm going to lock that layer and put another layer here because I just like to have that. It's just like when I paint, I like to put a big, you know, color or whatever value to lock everything together because this thing's mostly kind of overall one color or partly one color. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go these, whatever these things are. I'm just going to see if I can lock all these together. Mike, I have a quick question. Sure. How do we get rid of, or what am I doing wrong? When I was working on the project, I would get these long handles. Um, sometimes, okay, that's an interesting question. Sometimes, like when you're trying to pull something out, it would just get super long? Uh, no, I was using a pen tool, and then I would get these really long handles. Okay, well, sometimes I'll get really long handles. Um, like yours look like nice and like manageable, but I'll get out got got these long ones. Really, just like when you clicked on it, it would just get really long ones. Yeah. Let me look into that because actually I don't know why you're getting that. I'll look into okay. it. Okay. Cool. Thanks. So I want to do this one. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Can you make clipping masks on Illustrator? Absolutely. Okay. Like if I wanted to do this, and I don't want to jump too far ahead, but some, you know, I don't mind kind of just going, yeah, you do it like this, but because we're going to go back to it again, okay? But if I wanted to go, let's go back to our base layer real quick. And I go, eh, I don't want it to be this. I want it to be this star shape. And then I build my star shape and then I have to select both so make sure it's not locked. No, it's not. So I'm gonna lock everything else off. Oops. I'm gonna select everything. I'm gonna go command all. And that star, whatever I wanna use as a mask has to be on top. Does that make sense? 
then I have to select the thing that I want to mask and the mask itself and blah, blah, blah. And it can be multiple things. Then I just go up here to clipping mask, make, and there it is. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. And then look, see how I can't see it because it's the same color or doesn't have a line or something? Instead of having to go fish around for it, if I go Command Y, which is right here, View, Outline, I go Command Y, then I it it just shows me the line work, and I could just select it through the line work, and then go back Command Y again, and I go back to my normal view. Does that make sense? All this stuff you'll get second nature. Like you you can you're going to learn uh, this program fairly quickly, okay? Or you're going to learn to be fairly proficient in it fairly quickly. Okay, so I selected these. Let's cut, let's turn off that or lock that and turn that on. Everybody understands in their layers, they have the eyeball, they can turn off a layer or lock it, correct? Okay, so let's go. There's the ones I picked. I'm going to go back over here again and sample this gray. And there's that, right? And I'm just going to put a couple more things in here. So see these different regions, these colors, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to do like one or two more real quick. So let's do, let's do this one. Now this one, I'm just going to go right through all these because I'm going to go over them. So it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to go bink. Actually, I don't even need to outline that. I can just go through here. And then these, I'm gonna do a different color, so I don't care. So that's all I need. And then I'm gonna go over here. Sample that color. Now we have that. And again, I'm gonna build these real quick. And if I was doing this on a job, this would literally take me about 20 minutes to do the whole thing, beginning to end, totally rendered, okay? And you're going to get, you're going to be surprised how fast you get fast at this. Okay, and then we'll go another this color again. So now we have that. Oh, actually, this is a different color. This is blue, sorry. And then we'll do the same thing here. So why am I not concerned if it goes through it? Because this is gonna be an opaque shape. And do you guys still see, and I'll show you in a minute, hang on. And then these coming up over here, I can do as one shape. You see how I'm jumping ahead of the curves and then I'm pulling. And then this one's gotta get adjusted, which I just hit command, got the white arrow tool and adjusted it. This is a little trickier, it's a thinner line. So let, oops, let's go there. Okay, and then again, we're gonna sample this. And we're blocking it out just like a painting, correct? Just big flat shapes, right? I'm gonna just do a couple more here. Let me get this thing bigger so I can see what I'm doing. And again, I don't care what color you make this thing at all. Okay. And by the way, if I don't want this floating around, I can go, I could put on another layer. I could go up to object again, selection and lock the selection. So it's not, I don't keep grabbing it. Okay. 
If I want to unlock it, go back up to object, unlock all. Hang on. Okay. So let's do, I just want to be strategic here. Let's just separate this a little bit. Oh, I'm on base color. Be careful of that. You don't want to actually jump onto the wrong layer. What layer do you have that uh, clip art that you're grabbing the colors from layer four? Mm, it is on, yeah, it's on layer. Okay. It's on the base color right there. Oh, it's on the base one? Okay. Sometimes I'll put that crap on, a, um, on its own layer and just call it reference. So I just turn okay. it off if I want to. And it's all it's locked off on its own. Um, okay, so let's go here. I want to separate this. I'm gonna grab the gray over here. I'll do like maybe, and let's do this real quick. Okay, look, see this right here? See that gap right there? Now, I normally would, that wouldn't happen because I'd be a little more careful. But since it is there, I'm going to go, it's on this layer, actually. I'm going to go with my white arrow tool. Why? Why my white arrow tool? Josh. Uh, you're just going to pull the points over? Use so, the handles, right? Yeah, to, exactly. So in this case, I'm just going to grab this here and pull it there. And then look, it did that. So now I got to go grab, I got to click it right there. Oops. Click it right there. And there's my handle, you know, so on and so forth. I'd fix anything like that. I would have done it before. Yeah, it's right here. You know, and I would have fixed it already. Here, look, there's a little overspray right there. Anyway. So let's go here. And I like that color. I was going to change it, but I like that color. And then I could, you know, I would come in here and do the same thing. I'm going to lock these two because they're on the same layer and I don't want to get screwed up there. You know, and I could make this, I don't know what color they have, but I think it's black. So, I think that's enough for this. Okay, so now, okay, I don't need to go through all the shapes. That makes sense, correct? Okay, so now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna do two things. We're gonna do highlight. We're gonna do value and then or a shadow value, and then we're gonna do um, highlights. Okay. <laughs> which is very simple. So let's go. I'm going to grab just like they're doing over here. I would probably actually change that, but I'm not going to do it for the sake of this. And I'm just going to grab my, there's other ways I'm going to show you how to do this way faster later on, but I don't want to confuse this. And I want you to know how to do this from the ground up. So I just want you to know how to do it this way. Really sloppy job here. Okay. Now I'm going to go in and pick a value, a gray. Okay. I'm 
the hell is my letters? Okay, sometimes it does this. See how my swatches is empty? So I think, I don't know why it does that. So I'm gonna go up here to window. See, here's the confusing thing. It says swatches, right? And, and that is the swatches thing, right? But I gotta go down here and go swatch libraries. And we'll talk about all these libraries later and go color or uh, default. And I usually just use print and there it is. So that kind of should be there, but whatever. And here's, I'm just gonna use these print. And then I'm gonna come down here to my gray values right here. I'm gonna pick about there. I can always change it, it doesn't matter. And it's online, so I don't want it online. I want it to be there, right? And then does everybody in here know what overlays are in Photoshop? Yeah. Is no. anybody who doesn't? No. Okay, um, they're, they're just layer blends and they're in your, uh, okay, so here's the difference. In Photoshop, they live, you guys all know, they live right here in the layers palette, correct? Now, yes. why they didn't put them there, I don't know. It seems kind of weird to me. Um, but, so where they live at in here is under a palette called transparency. And here they are right there. And all an overlay does is it, whatever's on top of another layer, because that's what you do your overlay on, it will affect the layer underneath it based on what that particular overlay does, okay? Um, and most of them you just have to go through, but um, multiply with gray is gonna do this. So I'm gonna put it right here on multiply. Oops. You have to have it selected. It'll just give me my gray value or my, my shadow value, okay? And by the way, you can do this in Photoshop too. Um, so I, I, feel, I think that's a little dark. So I'm gonna go back up here to my swatches or to my print and go, I'm gonna go a little lighter. That's too light, maybe there. I could also dial it in under color right here. But I think that's okay. And then I'm gonna go like this one now, you know, and I would, correct this and all that. I wouldn't do it in one fell swoop like that. I do them individually. And then this one. And here's the beauty of it. Once I do this, I can just take my eyedropper tool and it picks up the overlay and the color. Okay. So it makes it very quick to render. Okay. You know, and sometimes there's um, there's reasons not to do it this way where we just darken the value of the color, um, but this works pretty good, okay? And then, okay, so let's look at this now. So now I look at this and go, okay, so let's say, I could do it one of two ways. I can go, I'm gonna lock this shape, this big fin shape. So command two. And then I'm just going to grab this side of it. I could go the other way where I grab the strip on top, but I'm just going to do it this way for now. You can start to see it doesn't take a whole lot of work anyway. And maybe I just do it this way. I'm just gonna go back to the original layer. I wanna unlock it now, cause I can't select it unless I unlock it. And I'm just gonna make the background layer a little lighter in value. In this case, I'm gonna do it this way. So now we separated those and this feels more like a shadow value. Does that make sense? What happened to Kayla's screen? What happened? I just closed the thing for a moment. Oh. My little, yeah. Okay, does that make sense so far? Okay, so we're just creating our shadow values now with a, a, a multiply gray, <clears throat> all right? So I could come here. And again, I'm gonna lock this for a second because I don't wanna grab it. And this is gonna have a cast shadow. Maybe it kind of I want to show that rounded form of the leg. That's probably way too much, but I'm just going to leave it. And 
And I could have done that as part of the value up on top. I probably would have. But see how it's just assuming the color underneath in a shadow value, okay? Same thing back here. I'd make sure there's a cast shadow off the body, so on and so forth. Okay, is there any questions on that? Josh? Um, so I had a different, uh, so I realized what the fill layer was earlier on. Um, it was for the nostrils. Was I supposed to do that a different way? No, I think it's fine. Like if I wanted that to be like, just line. For black. Right here? Yeah. Well, right now they are line, right? Yeah, so I had filled it in earlier. Um, oh, that's fine. So well, it just, sometimes that happens. Um, look, where is that ink? Oops. You would just go boom. You can go X or you can just click on it to pull it forward. Uh, photo, Illustrator has a little bit of a glitch in it where if you start clicking to pull the line forward or the fill forward, it'll, you'll have to click it 40 times. So it works easier just to hit X. Okay. okay. So now we've got X, pull this forward, and now we just fill it. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. So what happens is probably you click something, because I do that all the time, and it Okay, so like if, if I click, <clears throat> let's make this a line. Let's see if I go, let's make a star shape and let's go and it's filled, right? If I take the <clears throat> the sample, you know, the eyedropper tool, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I click this line, it'll apply that just like it applies a color. Okay. The same weight and all that kind of stuff, right? <clears throat> so sometimes you can accidentally hit a line and it'll apply it to another line. Mm. Okay. Because I do it all the time. <clears throat> um, what else am I going to say about that? I guess that's good. There's something I had in my head I want to say about that, but oh well. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now, okay, we all understand that, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to put one more just because I'm going to need it in a second. Hang on. Let's get off of this layer. Let's lock that layer and we're good. So I'm going to put one more here, which is going to be this one. I want a little more of a curve to it. So I kind of screwed that up, but that's okay. Actually, that's gonna drive me crazy, hang on. So essentially we're just tracing over our, our line work again. You're staying okay. underneath it. Underneath it. Or, yeah. Because tracing over it means that you have to be accurate to it and you don't. You just have to stay underneath it and you're good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, okay, so let's do the this. Now we have that. Okay, so here's the next part. <clears throat> and they've made this much easier over the last few years. If I create a box, and here's how I usually do it. <clears throat> I usually go to swatches, my standard swatches, these. And if you see right here, there's a gradient swatch, black to white. Do you guys see that? This is just how I usually do it. And I'll just click that. <clears throat> and I'm going to go to my, my gradient tools right here. You see it? And I'm going to go, I don't want it sideways. I want it this way. And then I go, <clears throat> this is what's going to generate how soft the transitions are. This is going to do, so now see how it's going to pure white now? Oops, um, and this is your gradient. I think it, it's up here. See how it shows hide gradient and, and, and annotator? If it disappears, which it does sometimes, go up under view and tell it to show it. I don't know why it does that, but sometimes it's the same way why your swatches disappear for some reason. 
<clears throat> anyway, so then this is my colors that I can move up and down. Okay. So if I double click this, it gets, God damn it. Hang on. I think somebody at the school needs to know not to put out any school emails unless I'm not in class. Okay. So I can, if I double click this, it gives me two options here. I can go to the color and adjust the color or I can go to my swatches and right now it's not there because it it screws up when it loses it like that. Normally they're there and I can just pick it out of the same swatch panel as this. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Or I can option drag and create another one and then go, I'm gonna go and add that color. And I'm going to go up here. I'm going to change this one to that color. So that's our um, <clears throat> way that we manipulate the uh, gradient. Does that make sense? Now, here's another thing. In your gradient panel right here, here's the same information as your bar right here. So you can manipulate it here too, and you can manipulate the softness or hardness of the transitions up here. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. And then it has these different types right now. I mean, they're kind of self-explanatory. One is um, radial. So if I make one of these, and now I switch it to radial, it becomes that, okay? And this one I think goes top to bottom. There it goes. So that one's going, both sides are fading out this way. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Josh, I saw you squinting. Yeah, it makes sense. I was just trying to figure out what was going on with the- If you look at it, you can see it. It's the, it it radiates out both ways this way. Yeah. You know, I, I don't hardly, I'll use the gradient one once in a while, but that's about it. I mean, that's just me, okay? Then you can, and then I'll get into this later, how we can totally adjust this. I'll do that like in a week. Okay. Yeah. Because <clears throat> they, they actually put a new feature in here. Actually, I forgot about it until I just looked at it. That is really good. Okay. And I'll show you guys that. Okay. And it lets you make much more complex gradients in a much easier way than it used to be. Okay. Um, okay. So we have this now. For some reason, that's weird. It's missing something here. I want to make a new one. I'm missing a thing here. It's really, oh, wait a minute. I know what it is, I'll bet. Okay, so I'm gonna click this. There it is, okay. So if I click this, so let's say I want this to fade to nothing, correct? Right here, see where it says opacity? That's the opacity of the point on the gradient that I'm, I got selected, okay? So I'm gonna go down to zero and it just fades completely off. Right? This used to be a pain in the ass to do, by the way. So I'm going to go here now. And I'm going to go. I'm going to make a new shape here. And this edge is sloppy, but I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. You're not going to see this edge anyway. So, And now I'm going to go back to my swatches. Or, I'm sorry, print. Pick this. Actually, I'm just going to, I don't want to have that. There. And now I'm going to go 
back to my gradient tool and I'll see how it's going this way. I want to pull it this way. And now I'm going to pull my point inside of the shape. I'm going to switch this one to white. So everything's white. I'm going to make another one in the middle. I'm going to option drag, put that in the middle. And then I'm going to go to this one, double click it and go to zero. I'm going to go to this one, double click it and go to zero. And now I have a highlight that fades off like a highlight. So you're just going, but it's gotta be inside the shape. Otherwise you're gonna see the edge. You're gonna see it cut off before, it's gotta fade before the edge, right? Then I can do it here. I mean, you can do it wherever. I'm gonna do it through the whole length of this. And I can take this, now I can do the eyedropper will also sample this the same way it is, but I'm going to go again. That's not too bad. I'm going to pull that in, make sure that's pulled in enough. I want it a little more this way. I want to make sure that's inside. Make sure this is inside. And that's too much. I want to pull it back a little bit. That's where my hot spot is right there. I want to pull it in a little bit. I can adjust this great this little flow right there, right here. And then I got to adjust this. It's not being so sloppy. It's sloppy, but it's okay. And see how we can start to light it up. This is a little strong. So I'm just going to come in here and go, I can do this. I can do it a couple ways. I could just, um, pull the whole opacity back down here in my transparency window, which I think is what I'm going to do. That's a little better. And then this one, I'll probably do the same thing. And now it's starting to make a little more sense. I'm going to do one here real quick. And again, I'm doing this sloppy, but, and then this needs to go probably pull over like that. And I don't like that one. I would actually make a cooler one for that, but just for the sake of argument, I don't like that at all, actually. But these are flowing over pretty good. Does that make sense? Another thing I would do is I would go, I would catch this, you know, wherever this is going to be, it's probably going to go over his form a little bit and follow his form a little bit or her. I don't know what this thing is. And then again, I'm going to go think and get a cast shadow off that fin. And I'd probably do it up here a little bit. And we're starting to get a little bit of dimension there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Kayla. Yes. Make sense. Yeah. Okay. And here's another simple little thing. Remember, we have to have nothing selected if we want to get our, um, so I'm going to get rid of this guy for a minute. It's locked, so I have to go unlock all. I'm just going to get rid of this guy. I'm going to go, like I said, I'm going to go reference. I'll put them on that layer. And then I can just turn it off. I'll lock it and turn it off. Okay, so what I want to do now is I don't have anything selected. So I'm going to go to document setup, edit artboards. And this thing does, it needs more room to breathe for what I want to do here.
And now I'm going to go back. And here's my base. Remember my base color? And I'm going to go, I'm going to select this base color. I'm going to go up to arrange. I'm going to send it all the way to the back because I want it sitting behind this. I'm going to go to swatches or in this case, print. That's, that looks okay. And then I'm going to set this right behind it. And then I'm going to go and create a little drop shadow here. Right? Just using its own shape. I could also, and this is real simple. I don't mind jumping forward on this. Go to effect. This is just like Photoshop. Um, blur, Gaussian blur. You don't want to overdo this. Preview. And I can soften up those edges a little bit. And I could go. And again, I'm going to send this all the way to the back under my object arrange, send it back. And maybe this is going to be. I'm going to pull it this way. If you hold shift, it'll constrain it straight up and down. I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier. I want to make this zero. And then maybe, maybe he's in some weird environment. I don't know. Oops. Normally I could just color pick this, but it's not there for some reason. I could give it a little graphic element. Now I probably go, let's see if I can make the shadow. I'm gonna give this a transparency. See if that works. I'll pull it away from that. That's too much. So this needs to go up. Maybe I'll squash this a little more. So on and so forth. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Um, and let me see. And then you, so you're going to end up with. Uh, I wish I had. Some, I have some that students have done. They did different colors and stuff that were really cool. I need to find those. Uh, here we go. These are all demos, so they're probably not great. So we went base color, multicolor, shadow value, highlight. Yeah? And then sometimes I, I'll do this. <clears throat> not usually, but I could use just a little dot as a, as a hot spot, a specularity uh, highlight. Or I could come in here and go grab my um, my uh, star tool. Got to get on a layer. Hang on. And go click on the, the board. Because if I just use it, it's going to default probably to this five-point star. But I want one with more. So right here where it says points, I clicked on the board. It gives me this. I'm going to go, I don't know, 13. And I'm going to twist this thing. Oh, that's all right, actually. It's probably too many points. But... I hardly ever use anything standard. I just use it as a jumping off point. And they can make a little bing, right? With sound effects. Okay, does that make sense? Yep. Yes. 
don't ever underdo the little overdo the little highlight crap right by the way whenever you do a a, a, a specular highlight like that let's say that you know it's off kilter like that i'm telling you this if you ever paint it then all of them have to follow the same angle does that make sense like have you ever seen one where somebody has an angle like this an angle like this an angle, it looks all weird because that doesn't happen in real life specularity follows each other okay because if i put this like if i put multiple specularity specular highlights on this and this would be way too much but You know, if one of them starts doing this and one of them starts doing this, it just, that looks super weird, okay? It just starts to look super weird because um, it doesn't do that. <clears throat> All right, does that make sense? Is, that, is there any questions on it? Uh, yeah, just a general question real quick. Uh, you said when we're using the pen tool, when we're doing like round shapes, don't or don't try snapping onto them, right? To the other points? Yeah, what I'm saying is, is what Illustrator is going to do that's kind of, interesting is if i'm drawing like let's say let's just lock all this stuff up and i'll just put a new layer on here like if i'm <clears throat> going through this it's probably better if i do it on a blank paper if i'm working and i go okay i'm drawing and there's part of my line okay and then here's another, here's my next line and it dies right there. And then I go, okay, now I'm starting one over here. What's gonna happen if when I get near this, it's gonna wanna grab onto it. And it's like, well, I don't want it to grab onto it. I wanna start right here. And sometimes you can just get in the proximity of it and they'll lock together. Okay, so what I do is temporarily, I might just grab these. I go up here to object, lock or command two selection. And now I don't have to worry about that because it's locked. I can't do anything with it, okay? And then when I don't want that to happen, then I go back up here and I go unlock all. And it's just gonna unlock everything, okay? Now, here's another trick. When you're making a very complex illustration with a ton of lines in it, let's get rid of that. And we're going to be doing more complex stuff very quickly. Sometimes, because these objects in Illustrator are layered on top of each other. And the last one you did is the one on top. The first one you did is the one on the bottom. Okay. And then they go up, which is why sometimes I need to go, if this was a shape that I need to get behind it, I go up here, arrange, and I send to back or bring to front, right? Well, sometimes when you're working on a project, you'll go, let me make sure everything's unlocked. Yeah, it is. You'll start to go, um, you'll want to select something. That's weird. Um, but what it'll do is something's in front of it. You've got this tangled mess and something's in front of it. So what you'll start doing, if you don't know how to do this, is you'll go, oh, well, I'll lock this. I'll lock this. I'll lock this so I can get to this because that's the only thing it's not locked. If you're doing a very, you know, when I say complex, I just mean there's a lot of line in there. Um, that is not an effective way to work. Okay, so what you can do is, let's unlock all these. And it's it's hard for me to, to differentiate what I'm gonna show you real quick. But what I can do, I can even do it if it has color fill in it is I can go to, again, I can go back up to this view we talked about before and go outline. It's not gonna really look that much different here. And what when I'm in outline view, I can actually kind of go through everything and click something in the back. And then I can just go back up here and go back to you know my normal line. Oops. Uh, you know, go back to my normal line. But the, for some reason the preview or the line view will allow you to go through all that stuff and pick things that are, it'd be very hard to pick without doing that. Does that make sense? For this project, it won't be, you know, for the thing we're doing right now, it's not that bad. Um, and then, uh, but we're gonna go through this, we're gonna go through very line-based stuff. And then we're gonna go through very shape-based stuff. And then we're gonna do a project. And the shape-based stuff isn't gonna take you very long either. 
Okay, so by next week, we'll probably be on to um, maybe even this week. I don't know. Actually, maybe this week. No, probably this week, we might go start going over um, shape based stuff. Uh, and then once you have those two things combined, where you really understand line, you really understand no line shape based work, you're, you're good. Those are the two foundational things that you got to know for Illustrator. Um, as far and then those two things are going to really show you how you build shapes in Illustrator because it's it's very different than anything else, right? And it, and it become at first it's at least to me it did it seemed really weird, but now it totally makes sense. You know what I mean? Because there were so many times where I'd go, why would I do that like that? I can just draw it. And it's like because this is way faster and way smarter, and you're already using a shape that you already have, so you're not trying to line up everything. It'll line up on its own, on and on and on. Okay, and um. I, it's like sometimes I just like giving myself an illustrator project just because it's like putting a puzzle together for my brain. It just feels like I'm putting a puzzle together. You know what I mean? And, and you guys, I hope, I think can see when you look at how we're working here, this idea that I said before, where this is just a bunch of, let's unlock all these. These are just a bunch of paper cutouts. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's going to be really good uh, also on the entertainment side, that kind of thing. I'm just on the design side in general um, for character design and for like really clarifying your character design, really getting a beautiful inked line on there and all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is this what you're talking about? Like on the first day of like uh, papers, how you have like different sections right now? It's exactly it. You just, it's cut paper. You know what I mean? Now, if you take the line thing out of it, it's totally cut paper. Okay. And I'm going to show you that maybe starting Wednesday. Uh, Cause you guys just went through this. No problem. Whoever, uh, everybody got it done. I'm still missing like four or whatever it is. Um, but you can see it's a very, it, it, it can become, it becomes a very fast program. You know what I mean? And, and it gives you another uh, tool in your toolbox where, and for infographics, like infographics in this program. You know, infographics are just, you know, they're always doing these very simple, like the Metro Rail logo. They'll go. Oops. That's not what I wanted. Just a little goofy, but that's fine. Well, let's do Avenir. And then look, I can grab this. I can go up here to align. We'll get into this later. Align that. Sometimes it does that. I don't know why. Then I'm going to go. And then now I'm going to take this shape. And get rid of this line. Just punch this shape out and maybe I'll take this one, take it back over here, pull this out. Maybe change this line to that blue. Oops. Maybe this becomes a little fatter. You know, and you just start building these kind of infographic -y shapes out of very simple things. Does that make sense? <clears throat> like, and, and I always say this, <clears throat> on top of all this, on, on your illustration and all that stuff, if you're putting together a presentation <clears throat> and it's going to be up, you know, slides or whatever, I'd be all over Illustrator. Why? Because it's, it's super readable and it just by its nature is super graphic. Does that make sense? 
and it's super fun. It just looks really fun. So, you know, I'm probably going to build my presentation out of that with big bright colors and infographics and very readable. And it's fun to look at. You know what I mean? I remember when I was a kid, you know, they didn't really have infographics like that or infographics like that. And when you're looking at information, it always look very dry. And now I look at stuff, I'll be looking at a magazine or something and they'll go, uh, some very dry subject, you know, water problems in the Central Valley. But the way they, they, they in, in one page, with just some simple infographics, things like that, I totally understand it. Does that make sense? And I kind of liked absorbing it. So like, this is kind of fun looking, you know what I mean? It pulls you in, okay? So there's just a lot of different, there's so many uses for it, okay? I think it's important. I think it's an important program. I think everybody should have to take it personally, not because I teach it, just because I think they should have to take it. I think it should be part of your core skill set, your core digital skill set. Um, anyway, and we'll get more and more into it. Um, do we have any more? Do we have any questions on this? So what I'm going to want on Wednesday is what I just did. I'm just going to want it um, uh, rendered, okay? With your highlights, your shadow values, your your color regions and and that's it yeah and by the way there's ways you could do this let's see if i can do it here before one right wednesday same time yeah uh, cool. hang on let's see if i can do this with josh's and i i, I didn't show you how to do this yet because it's just putting the cart before the horse God damn it what's going on here And let me see if I can do it. Damn it. Is this one? Oh, this is a different one. And it depends on how the line's set up. So let's get rid of all these. Let's go back to the line. And if all these lines are touching, I might be able to do this. And I will show you this later, so don't worry about it. It looks like they are. So I'm gonna go. So nor we went all the way around the perimeter, remember? How I would probably actually do this is I outline my strokes and then I would combine them. I'm going to take my white arrow tool. I'm going to, again, I'm going to go to my command, my outline view, because for some reason it lets me do this in outline view. Hey, what are you trying to do right now? I'll show you in a second. Oh, okay, for sure. I'm just taking out all the interior lines. As long as they're all lining up together, it'll work fine. And if they're not, I'll blame Josh because this is his drawing. Even though he doesn't know what I'm doing. By the way, you two in here that have gone through a Cal State Fullerton or whatever, I want to see portfolio pieces from you guys. Okay, so what I just did is I just got rid of the interior. I did this kind of sloppy, but this is how I would normally do it. Go back to my regular view. And now, just like we did before, let's grab this. So I wouldn't have had to go through here and do this by hand. I would have just built the shape out of the shape that's already there. And by the way, it's going to be perfect then. And I know I'm off, but does that make sense? Translation, there's always a faster way to do almost everything in here. I'm just not going to show you that because then you're not going to know how to do it by hand. I'll show it to you later. Yeah, I'm not even going to need to show it to you. You're going to get it. But that's how I would actually have done the outline. And the other thing with that is that I know it's going to be exactly what it's supposed to be. Okay. 
I, I don't have to worry about accuracy. Um, and also that would work if I didn't have a line and I need these things to be exactly, you know, exactly perfect. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, so this idea of combining shapes and all that stuff, that's where we're gonna go probably starting Wednesday, I'm guessing. If, if you guys all hit this thing pretty smooth, uh, then on Wednesday, I can sort of jump into that next thing. And then what I like about that, again, to me, line tool, the stuff we just talked about, and then shape building, and then we're ready to actually do something. You know, I'll try and find some student work, okay? Hopefully, I, this term, I'm gonna be much better about this. I'm gonna pull good student work over. And um, God, it's already 3.30. It feels like it's like 11 a.m. to me. Um, okay, if we don't have any other questions, I'm gonna let you guys go and I'll put this up under assignments. It's just a 10 pointer like this was. Um, we'll probably do one more, I think. 10 pointer and then we'll do a, a project where you can actually do something you want to do. Does that make sense? Sweet. And again, I'm going to be really uh, flexible. Even when I give you a project and I go, it's this, I'm going to be super flexible in this. This is not a specific subject matter class. So I don't have to worry about that. And I really want you guys who've already gone to Cal State Fullerton or whatever. I, I want you guys hundred percent thinking about portfolio pieces. Okay. Um, so uh, really start thinking about that and it'll start to make more sense as we move along. And also when I give you an assignment, uh, which will an actual, you know, project, uh, you know, come to me and go, Hey, I think I want to do this for this. I think I, and think about, by the way, and I hope you guys have done this. Um, you got to pull all your work out and start. And, and I, I have people do it in dart 100, the first term. So you guys should be doing it now, I think. Uh, cause I have them build a interactive portfolio in, uh, InDesign and a lot of them go, well, I haven't been here that long. I don't have anything. And I go, I don't care. Start designing your portfolio. And the reason is you, and I even let them use other people's work just to fill it in. And I go design a portfolio the way you want your portfolio to look with the type of work you want in it. And then what you start doing is you go, okay, like I want three pages or whatever of this character stuff. Well, now I have some character stuff. So out goes the placeholder in goes your your three pieces and the reason that's important and also how you design the graphics out and all that if you're new it's gonna it's you're gonna constant what you do what you're doing with your portfolio is constantly polishing you're constantly getting better you're constantly going back to your portfolio and going i thought that was good that's horrible and you replace it with something new but what it is doing is it's giving you a very much an awareness of how rounded your portfolio is okay because what people tend to do if I get them later, I go, hey, pull all your stuff. And this is why I do this. I go, pull all your stuff because I want to see what you got for your portfolio. And then all of a sudden they go, I've got nothing but character design. And I'm like, right, because everybody here is obsessed with character design. And guess what? More than likely, you're not going out and getting the job as a character designer yet. It's, it takes a while. And, and you got a whole portfolio for the character design. Good luck. You need to have some environment in there. You need to have this. You need to have that. You need to have a well-rounded portfolio. And if you're looking at it all the time, you don't have that. When I was at Art Center going out the door, eighth term at Art Center, I had a portfolio this thick, okay? I had three books plus a box of slides, okay? I, all these people going out the door, eighth term, I saw them all panicking, looking for their stuff. They Then they pull all their stuff out and they go, I don't have shit for a portfolio in here. I've got like three good pieces that I can put in a portfolio. And I'm like, what have you been doing for three years? Four years. What have you been doing here? You know, haven't been building a portfolio. That's your whole job when you're in school, right? So start thinking about it now. Start putting it together just loosely. And it's going to keep changing. No, it's going to keep changing. Even the graphic presentation of it's going to keep changing because your eyes are going to get better. You're, you're going to get more sophisticated. You're, you know what I mean? You're going to get better pieces. And then you're going to know, let's say in this class or whatever, you're going to go, you know what I really need? I'd really like to have like a very flat style um, background kind of thing that would be perfect for vector. Does that make sense? And then we'll figure out something and it'll be your own idea and everything. And I'll go, yeah, do that one for this project. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. the, let me show you this real quick. You know, like this kind of backgroundy art thing. I know this is Disney stuff, but you know what I mean? You could do a whole little... 
don't let me forget. I want to show you guys some style guides on Sunday, on a Wednesday. It has some stuff like this there I want to show you. But, you know, you could do a little village like that or whatever, whatever your concept is uh, or the story is, because this stuff's all Illustrator, right? That's all this guy does. He has one of a map that's kind of cool, if I can find it. Yeah, I can't find it. But does that make sense? Yes. And I can show you a really good example on a style guy that I got. It was for, um, I think it was for Tangled. Um, and it has some village stuff in it. Maybe I can find it real quick. I don't know if it's on this computer or not. A whole bunch of style guides. I don't know where they're at. I know where they're at. They're on another drive. Okay, I'll show them to you on Wednesday. Uh, don't let me forget that because it's actually important for this class. I always show these style guides. Style guides are all um, almost all in vector, and there's a reason for that, and I'll talk about that on Wednesday. Does that make sense? But don't let me forget. Actually, I need to write it down. Or I will forget. Okay, no more questions. I'll let you guys go, yeah? Oh, wait a minute. No, I got it. Okay. Um, if you're running any problem, go ahead. For the open uh, office hours, do I need to call you beforehand for Wednesday or? Did you send me an email already? No, I didn't send it. I was just planning to, because I know you have them Mondays and Wednesdays. So Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday and. Really? It's Tuesday I read, and something. I just read it. Just I mean, I'm it. pretty um, open, but let me double check something. I mean, whenever you can. No, no, no. Because Wednesday, I have, I'm just, Wednesday's my day where I'm just like this. I go from morning till night. Oh, okay. But let me, I want to make sure that I didn't screw that up. Hang on. Because I probably did. Monday, Wednesday, 9 to 1130. Yeah. Okay, so just, um, that makes sense, right? Wait, Monday, Wednesday? No, it should be Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday. Remember I told you I, trans I transpose things all the time? That's yeah. it. So I got to change that. Damn it. Um, whatever. It's Tuesday, Thursday. So if you can, I have, I think I have one tomorrow at, shit. I have one tomorrow at 10. Um, Thursday would probably be, and I got to go down the hill on Thursday whenever you can it's not like okay what do you need rush. to talk about oh uh, we could talk about portfolio stuff and then it's something to do with uh okay good let me um this week is just weird mm -hmm. but um if you if you can if you can be a little bit flexible i can try and get a hold of you like either tuesday or thursday and i can give you a heads up and go hey I'm, i think i'm gonna be home and if you because it could be a night i don't care mm -hmm. i just want to make sure i'm here okay. and most of the time those two days are fine but I have to, I have a doctor's appointment and then I have to do this other thing tomorrow. So it's a little different, but I can buzz you. Like if I'm coming up the hill and go ahead, I'm going to be home by five. Are you around? And if you're not around, that's fine. Go, no, I'm doing this. I'll, I'll reschedule it again. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. All right, you guys. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll put this up as quick as I can. The Zoom.